some breaking news in Denver. And uh, look, we're not dancing on anyone's grave here. I want to start by saying that. It's news because it's major news. This is the top story in sports right now. It's news because it's a former Seahawk, a former franchise quarterback. And it's news because I always find conversations about trades fascinating. Russell Wilson has been benched in Denver. Bump, I'll start with just this. When you saw this news, what was your immediate reaction? Mine was shock. I, I thought that, like, this has not been a horrible year for him, though I didn't think that Sean Payton was a huge fan. My first reaction was 66% completion rate, pretty good. Right. 3,000 yards, pretty good. 26 touchdowns, pretty good. Only eight interceptions, pretty good. He has been sacked 45 times, but that's what Russell does, no matter what offensive line you have in front of him. So then you got to dig in and be like, all right, so what are the uh, advantages of not having Russell Wilson be your starting quarterback? You avoid having to pay, what, $37 million guaranteed and my man gets hurt. So if you have a team in the Denver Broncos who are having a decent season, second in the AFC West, mm-hmm. they're seven and eight, they have a chance to make the playoffs. Right. If you are benching a quarterback that has led you to this point, that has overcame, but like, let's keep it real, Russell's had a good year Yeah. All right, after bouncing back from last year. You're benching a guy that gives you the best opportunity, in my opinion, unless they see something in Stidham that I haven't seen in the past, what, five, six years or something like that. You're benching that guy. That lets me know, oh, you're done. You're ready to move on no matter what happens this year. You're not worried about making the playoffs. You want to make sure your guy's in there, and you don't want to guarantee him $37 million. That's- the relationship yes. is is ruined over there. It is a wrap. Can you imagine going to Russell Wilson and saying, hey, man, having a good season? We're going to sit you down for the rest of this year. That's the thing. I'm it's so, disrespectful, honestly. I'm so glad you pointed out the guarantee. And I'm glad that you pointed out that what it really is, is it's not, you know, hey, this news isn't Russell Wilson's playing horribly in Denver and Russell Wilson is the worst quarterback ever to walk the earth. The news is Denver's ready to move on from Russ. Like, yeah. that's what this says. And like Bump said, that guarantee, uh, it's a $37 million guarantee in 2025 that's guaranteed for injury only. It becomes fully guaranteed in March. So if Russell Wilson were to play in the final two games and suffer some kind of catastrophic injury, the Broncos are on the hook for that money. So this is yeah. them saying, hey, we don't care if Jarrett Stidham isn't as good. And he's not. Like Russell Wilson uh, at, at a subpar Russell Wilson, which is who he's been in Denver, is better than Jarrett Stidham. This is about Denver saying we're ready to move on. This is about a a couple in a relationship just trying to make it through the holiday season before they break up. They're like, look, all right, man, we know that it's over. Um, we're not on, on great terms. We're going to go to each other's homes, our family's homes. We're not really going to chill and sit next to each other and have those conversations. You're still going to be around, but we're not really in this relationship. We just have to get through the holiday season, and then we are going to split. And that just amazes me. It, it it amazes me, and it doesn't at the same time, because you see the way Sean Payton was hooting and hollering at Russell Wilson a few weeks ago. Oh, man. Um, he would never do that Do that to um to Breeze. Never, never. And also Breeze is, a, I would say, a different caliber of quarterback. But Russell Wilson ain't no chump neither. Mm-mm. So the fact that you, you see him yelling at him on the sideline and then you get hit with this news, man, Sean Payton didn't want Russell to begin with, it feels like. He thought maybe he had something there. You, you watch the film, you see what he's capable of doing. He's been a pro bowler, uh, won a Super Bowl. Obviously, he's a good quarterback in this league, but there's something off when it comes to personalities and um, understanding of one another. So this is uh, this surprised me. I thought this was fake news, man. I had to check my phone a few times, refresh <laughs> Make sure it. That verification like, come on now, tab was real. this ain't real. And I and man, I feel just like last year. I feel bad for us at some point. I feel bad for him here because you and I Thank were you. talking about him. We don't think he's a bad dude. My man is a, is a husband, a father. Mm-hmm. Um, never got in any type of trouble. Like you know, you might not be able to rock with him when it comes to certain characteristics. You not be able to sit down and have a beer with him. But uh, he's not paid to do that. He's paid to to be a quarterback. So, yeah, this was surprising. And uh, Denver Broncos, goodness gracious. Y'all went hard on my girl, Stacy. Oh, uh, yeah. A certain radio well, station the, uh, over there did. Yeah, yep, our sister station at Denver mm-hmm. radio station. Uh, I got some for y'all later. Yeah, but uh, I will give the context of what happened before we get to that, which is I am so excited. My favorite segment that we do on this show every single Wednesday. Um, that was me going on the Denver station. And this is what I found so fascinating about Russell Wilson's legacy. I know people roll their eyes at that word in Seattle. Russell Wilson is the best franchise quarterback Seattle has ever had. Russell Wilson's personality, the way that he viewed himself, the way that he did or didn't absorb information and feedback, I think caused some strife between him and Pete Carroll. And it wasn't Mm -hmm. uh, like animosity. I don't think on Pete's part, certainly. Um, and part of that's age. Like, I don't think Pete hates anyone. He's like, I'm too old for this. Right. Like, I'm, I'm too old to have some kind of, like, hatred toward a 20, 
something year old. Uh, but I do think it changed what Russell thought he was capable of and what he was willing to do. When I went on the Denver station, I said, look, Russell's a complicated person. He's a Hall of Fame caliber player, but there are some issues in that marriage when he left Seattle that you've got to figure out. Is he going to take feedback? Is he going to continue to grow? Is he going to you know, find those things that he wants to correct within himself? And I think that especially with that first year in Denver with Nathaniel Hackett, the problem is they gave him the reins and they were like, you're here to save the franchise. Save us. And then it was a twofold problem. One, they didn't have the talent they thought they had around him. That offensive line was problems. Uh, you know, they, they lost their running back early. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett was just not cut out to be a head coach that time around. Best of luck for him in the future, but that just wasn't his year. And then on the flip side, Russell Wilson was bad. Like, he wasn't playing very well. And this year, like you said, Russell Wilson's better. But sh- when Sean Payton got there, I feel like the writing was a little bit on the wall. It wasn't blatantly on the wall. Like, it wasn't painted in red. But it was – you were taking that paintbrush out, and you were going, is Sean Payton going to come here and say, I want my own guy? I don't want this guy. I don't want this 34-year-old, 35-year-old, washed up, like maybe he'll figure it out guy. I want my first-round quarterback. No, he wanted that or Aaron Rodgers. Um, you look at what the, the Broncos have been through this year. Now, they suffered one of the worst losses I've ever seen in football, 70-20, to 20, to the Miami Dolphins, right? Uh, you start off the, se- the season kind of rough, but then you get back in this thing. You beat the Green Bay Packers. You beat the Kansas City Chiefs. You beat the Buffalo Bills. You beat the Vikings. You beat Cleveland, who's a playoff team right now looking at clinch this weekend. Uh, you lose to Houston, and then you beat the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Russell Wilson has been playing some good football. So it's almost like Sean Payton was looking for an excuse to get him out of there. No matter what, mm-hmm. Russell is that kid. No matter what he does, no matter what he says, you don't believe him anymore, and you're looking for any opportunity to get him out there, and they found one. They said, look, hey, call, uh, Sean Payton got called upstairs and said, look, man, let's look at these books real quick. You know, we can save $37 million, right? This guy gets hurt these last couple of games. We got to pay him $37 million. Sean, you want to get rid of, rid of him anyway, right? So let's go ahead and sit him down, save us that $37 million just in case, and start looking towards the future. Meanwhile, you're in a playoff chase. That's wild. That is nuts to me. You're That's second wild. in your division right and you, now. And you're in a playoff drought, which is since their last Super Bowl visit, they haven't been to the playoffs. So you are looking to end a drought, and you have a chance to do it, Freaking and you're benching nuts. your quarterback, so you won't pay $37 million? You know what? Now now I'm getting defensive for Russ. All right? <laughs> Last year. Not not bump the Broncos yeah. fan. No, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Last year I was like, go ahead and Russ and struggle. We need those picks. Go ahead and do your thing. This year I'm hoping for him to bounce back. He did exactly that. He's doing that right now.